Welcome to Israeli News Live. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live as we were speaking to you guys yesterday uh, about Mosul. Uh, of course, the embattled city there really getting very interesting how this battle is uh, unfolding. Uh, RT is reporting the media coverage in the Iraqi Mosul op is censored and suppressed, according to the RT reporter that, uh, that is inside this embattled city. And the reasoning for all of this suppression has a lot to do uh, with what a Russian news uh, report here, RIA.ru, a source told why the Iraqi forces slowed the offensive in Mosul, and it is because of the huge civilian loss of life. ISIS is clearly using civilians as their uh, shields in this battle uh, for this region here. And also, as we mentioned to you yesterday, Mosul, uh, where the ancient city of Nineveh is, is still standing until this day, uh, after ISIS, so of course, destroyed a lot of the, the ancient ruins of Nineveh. But it is prophesied by Nahum and also Zephaniah, the biblical prophets, uh, one here, but Nineveh have been from old like a pool of water, yet they flee away, stand, stand, but none looketh back. Take you the spoil, spoils of silver, take the spoil of gold, for there is no end of the store of rich with all precious vessels. She is empty and void and waste, and the heart melteth, and the knees smite together. Convulsion is in all the loins and the faces of them that all have gathered blackness. Uh, ISIS, when they came into this region here, they did exactly that. They took the treasures of gold and silver, and in fact, huge amounts of American dollars were in the banks there. All of that was taken. The precious things, the furniture, everything ends up on eBay and elsewhere as they were selling off all of their important treasures that they discovered. Now, that was under ISIS. But then we find out that the prophecy continued to fulfill. You go into chapter 3, and we find out that Nineveh uh, is basically going to be just totally laid waste. And as we reported yesterday, one of the Russian news sources there was talking about Nineveh has become a desolate uh, city there. Thy shepherd slumber, O king of Assyria, thy worthiness are the rest. The people are scattered upon the mountains, and there is none to gather them. So not only that, but it speaks about that they go, they go into exile and no one is going to bring them back. And again, that's Nineveh. Zaphaniah, as we shared with you yesterday, also part of the prophecy there. But here's something that I ran across uh, today that really blew my mind away. This is a video done by the uh, Iraqi government there about the liberation of Mosul. And it's really important that you look at this video here because what's it about? It's about a liberation from ISIS and it is clearly showing how that the Catholic Church is using the Iraqi forces as liberators. Watch this man right here. See, the property, is, he reads the sign as a property of Islam. He comes up, the door is chained and locked. He looks up, it's a church. Then comes the busting of the lock off the church, the liberation, the freedom, the army there, the Iraqi army has become the warriors for the Catholic Church. Now I'm all for the fact of liberating the Christians in this part of the world because they have certainly been murdered at the hand of ISIS. But don't forget, Barack Hussein Obama is the one to help get ISIS started, along with the very man calling for all these wars to begin with, like John McCain that was seen pictured with some of these guys as well. Uh, but I just thought it was interesting. If there's ever a, a video that is worth a thousand words, uh, this one right here, as they say, a picture is worth a thousand words. This here is letting you know that this battle that is going on is a religious battle. And I was, like I said, just really blown away by seeing this, seeing the imagery here and what they're portraying, trying to show the Iraqi army is a Catholic army. So interesting, the rosary, everything. Again, kind of reminds me of Nekodesha when the Pope of Rome brings the three monotheistic religions together and specifically they list on their site Roman Catholic, Muslims, and uh, uh, excuse me, and uh, Jews. No mention of the Baptists, Methodists, Presbyterians, Pentecostals, Messianics, or any of the other groups, right? So odd, isn't it? All right, moving on away from that there, let's real quick run over to Damascus. Again, another prophecy that we could jump over to. Let me just quickly grab the prophecy on this right here. Uh, 
to, to share that with you, we want to jump over to Isaiah chapter 17. And in Isaiah 17, we find out the burden of Damascus. Behold, Damascus is taken away from being a city, and it shall be a ruinous heap. Verse 1, the cities of Aurora are forsaken. They shall be for flocks which shall lie down, and none shall make them afraid. What an amazing prophecy that we see regarding specifically Damascus. And watch what's going on right now. Syrian army advances in a Kabon neighborhood of Damascus. Now they're claiming that the Syrian army, according to South Front, is gaining control over this area where the, uh, the free Syrian army has come in trying to take these areas away from the Syrian Arab army. Uh, but we're finding out all kinds of interesting things that are actually going on here. Let's uh, show you some imagery. This here is on, uh, I think, the uh, northeast uh, corner of Damascus right here. And by the way, those mountains in the background, I believe that's the same, same chain of mountains that goes right over to Israel uh, to the mountains there. Uh, but these are, they were dropping bombs right there. That's on one part of Damascus. That, that is uh, Koban, the neighborhood there of Koban. And then we also have, uh, 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 let me jump over here. This is another one that is going on here. Another part around Damascus. This is the Russian and Syrian militaries that were dropping bombs there. Uh, this is on the east side of Damascus. And again, it is the city of Damascus is really embattled and entrenched by different forces that are, that are all around the city of Damascus. So besides all the other places that have been fighting and, and dealing with the wars in, uh, in, in Syria there, the different cities, Aleppo, etc., now Damascus is under siege. And we are still waiting to find out if our good friend uh, Lorenzo on uh, already happened. Let me just kind of real quick, we'll just look and see if he has actually updated anything as of yet, uh, because he was following, uh, Lorenzo was actually following uh, the, uh, a, a ship, a, a, a shipment of military equipment uh, right here on his page there. It doesn't like he's updated anything as of yet uh, from Romania where U.S. military equipment was loaded on board. He actually stated on there that he thought it might be headed to Beirut, Lebanon. And uh, I don't think that was 18 hours ago when that was first brought out. I'm just kind of see if we've gotten anybody that has spoken anything else about this here. Um, just to kind of see if there has been any update as to whether or not where this ship has gone uh, to as of, as of thus far. And I am not seeing anything as of yet. So very serious issue that is happening there, waiting to see, uh, wondering whether or not Israel may end up going inside of Syria as well, especially with Damascus being under siege right now. And are, is the U.S. going to still back up the Free Syrian Army, etc.? What's going to happen with Damascus? We'll just have to wait and see how that turns out. Also, uh, Belarus. KGB arrests the Ukrainian agent plotting a Maidan coup, the very same man that was involved uh, in Kiev and the coup operations there has now been arrested in Belarus. That kind of helps strengthen the story that we published the other day that they're trying to topple Russia from within. Of course, Belarus being another country that they're trying to do a lot of massive protesting. This happened on sa Saturday, March the 25th during the attempt to hold a so-called Freedom Day in Belarus. Opposition activist Denis Ivashin uh, uh, from Grodno was arrested. Ivashin uh, arrest uh, speaks to the possible involvement of Ukrainian special forces in the organizing of unauthorized demonstrations in Belarus. Uh, he had gained fame among radical opposition circles in Belarus after participating in the mass riots in Kiev in early 2014. Uh, so this is the reason why all of this is, is mattering for the Belarus government as well as Russia. We know that the different uh, liberation movements that have been trying to do inside of Russia, it seems like the outside forces are trying to destabilize these nations before military confrontation, which very well may follow afterwards. Uh, president Putin is also going to be meeting with the president of, uh, of Belarus, uh, Luka, Lukashenko, and 
the course, the art, the topics are supposed to be on cooperation, financial cooperations, oil, gas, et cetera, things like that. But I'm sure with the possibility of an upcoming uh, conflict in Europe and that of uh, Kalin, Kalin and, Kaliningrad, uh, that may be something altogether different. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live and 